Welcome back, it's Boyan. Uh, today's video we're going to do a simple uh, drum groove programming. There's many ways to do this. Uh, in today's episode we're going to do it using just the computer mouse inside of the AW. Uh, we're going to use Cubase. So first we're going to start a new project. I'll start with empty here. Okay, okay we'll ask me to create a, uh, choose a folder. I'm just going to use this test project I've created for the folder and um, I'm going to save this right away. Um, and I'll just call this uh, test drums two or something. Test drum B three. I think. How about that? Okay. And so, in order to uh, start, we need to first load handy drums. We're going to choose to add an instrument track, which we're going to uh, choose what to load. So I'm going to uh, select here Studio Stand. Oh, Studio Stand. Perfect. It's already pre-selected for me. And we're going to call this track uh, drum beat one. Whatever. When we add that, it will create a little, uh, what's called an instrument track. Let's first see if it, if it works. It does work, okay? So it's all good. Now, it's creating this track, but it's empty. So if I hit play, nothing happens, because this is not a virtual drummer. This is just a sampled instrument, okay? So until I put something there, some sort of MIDI performance, nothing's going to happen. So in order to do that, we're going to create a little bar of uh, MIDI here, so an empty bar of MIDI. I just use a pencil tool, and uh, again, nothing happens when I hit play, but it will in a moment when I start programming stuff. Uh, for this video, I'm going to just choose the tempo of 110. We're going to just make sure it's connected, which already it is, okay, to the uh, studio standard. When I double click, it opens it here. I like it in a new window, so I'm just going to change this in. Cubase preferences because I find it quite annoying that it opens in that lower zone. So I'm just selecting to open a new window. So now instead of it showing down here, which is too small for me, when I double click, it opens here. Okay. So I want to program a simple beat, and you might wonder how do I find where, where are my drums? Well, they're all here mapped out on this keyboard. That's one way. If you wonder, well, how do I know where is each thing? Well, one way is like what I'm doing now, just kind of playing here. Or you can just go back into this um, sample instrument and click on the key mapping, and it'll tell you exactly where your kick, your snare, your everything is. Okay, so we see kick and snare on C1, D, and D1. Let's let's start there. Let's put a little kick drum on. Oops, that's not a kick drum. That's kick drum. And let's put a little kick drum on beats one and three, and see what that sounds like. Okay, pretty good. And let's put a snare on two and four usual place okay okay that's quite rocky so i'm gonna go for a slightly more chilled out groove so i'm gonna take that uh, velocity down on these guys okay that's a bit better okay so now let's add some hi-hats uh they should be here yeah that sounds like an edge that's a tip again we can double check in uh, our key mapping or even on the, uh, you can find all the drum maps on uh, Goron Grooves website, library.gorongrooves. Uh, that's my hi-hats on just on the beat. Okay, so they're way loud, so let's take them down. I'm going to call shift now when I'm doing this here, so it doesn't turn down the snares and kicks, just uh, just affects the hi-hats. Uh, that's on cube, it's obviously on another DW, but different. Okay, not bad. Let's add some... Um, different sounds on the offbeat. So we're going to use a tip, which is what a, your real drummer will most probably do. You play the uh, on beats with the edge and off beats with the tip. Not necessarily, but it's kind of a standard thing. So, okay, so these tips would normally be way, way softer, so they're really loud now. I'm going to take them down until it sounds... Probably take them down a bit more. I think that snare is a bit heavy as well. Yeah, take that down a bit. And okay, I still think the hi hat tip is too loud. Okay, so maybe let's try that. That's not bad. A little bit robotic, so I'm just gonna do a, a little tiny change on the snare drum. I'm just gonna, just to my taste, I'm just gonna move it off the grid a little, little bit. Just to lay it back a bit, and maybe I'll do the same with the um, with this hi hats. 
Yeah, I just take them. You know, I might go early, I might go late, depending on what kind of feel I like or I, or maybe what a drummer would play. But let's try that. See that. Huck. That sounds good. I'm happy with that for this. Uh, and then let's make it just a one bar there. Let's copy that uh, over. So we now have a uh, two bars. We make that a loop. Let's see that. And let's say, let's say I want to just do a little um, little ghost notes here, just to uh, you know make it a little bit more interesting. Let's add a little two snares, but not this loud. I'm gonna make them super soft because they're just what they call ghost notes. They're just little feathering of the snare drum. Okay, so let's have this little two bar phrase now. That's pretty good. Okay, and let's make it the four bars. So we'll copy these two over here. And let's say at the end of this last one, I'll put another one here. At the end of this last one, let's do a little drum feel. Let's do that. Let's do like a little, just a simple tom feel. Where are the toms? Here, there. All right. Let's go. Turn. Wrong place. It's a bit tricky when you do it with a mouse, obviously, because it goes all over the place. So that would be my tom. I already know that's going to be way too loud, so I'm just going to turn these toms down to a kind of a level what I'd expect to be. Okay, let's have a let's have a listen. Okay, great. Now, trouble is here. And a real drum will not play the hi-hats at the same time he's playing the toms with the same hand. So I'm just going to mute these uh, hi-hats here. Uh, or actually, I'll get rid of them altogether, delete them. And I we'll probably don't need these little ghost notes now. It's got a nice feel. And what a real drummer might do in this case, when he's playing the, the toms, he probably play a, a hi-hat with his foot. Okay, with his foot. So let's see. I think you see here. Yeah, this is the, this the hi-hat with the foot. So let's chuck one there. And let's put one there. And let's turn those guys down so it's more, more appropriate. Okay, so there's a four bar uh, phrase. And let's say at the end of the phrase, we probably want to do like a little crash symbol. So we'll go into this fifth bar here. And instead of this hi hat, we're going to do a crash symbol, which is there. Quite a loud crash, so I'm going to turn that down to a soft crash. And let's see a finished uh, four bar or five bar beat. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of, of what to do and how to um, get going uh, with a simple uh, beat using handy drums. Now, you may be wondering, this is quite a tedious process to, you know, be finding drums like this like I was doing, and you'd probably be right. Um, I normally probably wouldn't do it like this, but I just want to show you what it would look like by default. So um, another way to, instead of going and trying to find your uh, key mapping here, you can actually load a drum map. I might do a video especially on drum mapping, but... Uh, We'll go like to click here with the drum maps, uh, drum map setup, and let's uh, let's load the drum map. Now you can get these drum maps from our website, library.goranggrooves. Go to the tutorial section and find them. Just search drum maps. So we're gonna use a standard one for this. So once I load this, okay, you'll have all of these uh, names of the actual drum sounds mapped and to to notes. You will you'll be able to see them when we select it here first. Handy drums standard map. I'm going to change to these little diamond looking things and look at that. Now you can actually see uh, uh, all of the names of the beats that we did. See? Uh, they're in a bit different order than what they b were before, but um, you know, you might like it that way. Now, uh, there was another way to do this. So, say, um, I'm going to mute this for now. So, okay, it doesn't play anything. We go VST Instruments or F11. And I create a rack. So I just load the uh, handy drums into rack. I'm going to use, like, say, I don't know, let's use Retro Custom. I'm going to lo load it into a rack. 
uh, I'm going to cancel this because I want to show you something. So I've, I've loaded this instrument. It's called a rack instrument now, so it's not actually um, having, hasn't got any MIDI associated with it. So when I play this, one doesn't doesn't do anything. It's over here. Uh, this is my new rack or sample instrument track. So what I need to do, say, I uh, might create a new MIDI track, okay? But I can connect this MIDI track later. Uh, drum beat retro, whatever. Right now, Cubase has connected it to something called a micro Microsoft synth. So it's probably not going to do anything when I put... Uh, you're not going to hear anything when I put it. I'm going to copy this, okay? So this MIDI beat, I'm copying down to here, to this MIDI track. That one up there is muted. Okay, I'll put them next to each other so you can see. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's sounding like a piano because obviously it's connected to a, some sort of a synth, which is a piano. But I can connect it, and I'm going to, to the Retro Custom, which I loaded earlier. When I do that, here we go, we hear the drums. If it's not connected, you don't hear anything. It's like a drummer playing with his hands in the air don't make any sound without hitting the drums so you need to put the drums in front of it so the MIDI information is just you know doing that obviously some of you guys might know this already but we do get this question a lot why doesn't it play well it's because it's usually not connected so that's what the same drum beat sounds like on the retro custom here it is again on the studio standard See, it's slightly different. There you go. Uh, now, there are other ways to program the drums. Uh, you can, uh, and we, we might address that in a different video. Different DAWs are going to probably have a slightly different way, but the idea is usually the same. So you need to load your sampled instrument, and then you need to have some sort of a MIDI information running into it. And how you connect it, you have to check your own manual. Uh, in Cubase, this is how you do it. Hopefully uh, this was useful. If it is, you can click like. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Keep grooving.